shaped variety wood. Russets are also sufficiently crunchy when fried, and their lower than average sugar content means their flesh stays white longer. When the potatoes arrive at the factory, they travel along rollers that rub off any foreign matter, things such as soil, small rocks, and plant parts. The rollers also scrape off the eyes. The potatoes then enter the washing station. As they spin in a revolving cage, water jets spray their surface, cleaning them thoroughly. Next stop, a sorting machine that divides the potatoes by size. It's made up of successive levels of vibrating grids. The shaking forces the smaller potatoes through the grid openings, separating them from the larger potatoes. Big potatoes become classic strip-shaped fries. Small ones become ring-shaped or cube-shaped fries. After sorting, the potatoes drop into a collection bin. Once full, it releases the potatoes into a giant steamer. After about 10 seconds in the pressurized steam, the skins are soft enough to come off with just a little pressure. That happens next in this machine, called the peeler. It looks like a giant clothes dryer, except that the drum is lined with brushes. As the drum tumbles, the bristles rub off the skins. As the skinless potatoes exit the peeler, workers inspect them, tossing any that have green or rotten parts or pieces of skin still stuck to them. The type of fries in production determines which of two systems to do the chopping. A series of rotary mechanical slicers, or a hydraulic system in which running water thrusts the potatoes against cutting blades. The freshly cut potato pieces drop into a canal. Flowing water transports them to a conveyor belt that will move them through the next phases. Now for a high-tech quality check. Each and every piece passes by a camera in which a computer analyzes size and color. Any substandard fry-to-be is flagged and an air jet blows it off the production line. The good pieces fall into a water tank. As they soak, sugar leaches out of the flesh so that they'll all turn out the same color once they're cooked. Then, a process known as blanching. The pieces go into hot water, then cold water. This firms up the flesh and makes the potato flavor more pronounced. Then it's into the fryer. The potatoes cook for about two minutes in non-hydrogenated vegetable oil. As the french fries leave the fryer, excess oil drains down through holes in the conveyor belt to a collection pan below. The fries now pass through the freezer area which is between minus 15 and minus 25 degrees Celsius. They take about 10 minutes to freeze. Once they do, an oscillating conveyor belt deposits them into chutes. Each chute has a built-in scale set to the package weight, which for this production run is four kilograms. Once that quantity accumulates, the bottom of the chute opens and the fries drop into a plastic bag. All the customer has to do is drop these frozen french fries into boiling oil for two to three minutes and they're ready to serve.